الحمد لله الذي هدى الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي قل لأزواجك إن كنتن تردن الحياة الدنيا وزينتها فتعالين فتعالين أمتعكن وأسرحكن سراحا جميلا وإن كنتن تردن الله ورسوله والدار الآخرة فإن الله أعد للمحسنات من كن أجرا عظيما يا نساء النبي من يأت من كن بفاحشة مبينة يضاعف لها العذاب ضعفين وكان ذلك على الله يسيرا ومن يقنت منكن لله ورسوله وتعمل صالحا نؤتها أجرها مرتين وأعتدنا لها رزقا كريما صدق الله العظيم As we normally talk about some of the Sahaba Radwanullahi alayhi majma'een to benefit from their lives and as if we have missed their company at least talk about them and try to substitute for that loss by talking about them which is almost like seeing their lives and spending some moments with them. The list of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een of course is very long and we talked about many of them walhamdulillah therefore I thought we should try to cover some of Sahabiyyat so that our sisters and mothers can benefit from their lives. We learn what type of life the Muslim women were spending at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How were they spending their time at home? What was their normal lifestyle? What is it that normally they used to do? And especially their achievements. And what did they do for the Ummah at that time? We will stand inshallah with our mothers. Ummahatul Mu'mineen and the mothers of all the believers. And of course, as we talk about Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the first one that we need to talk about is Khadija radiallahu anha, but we already talked about her before, as she was one of the first ones to embrace Islam. And according to some of the histories and tafasir, 
he was the first one to embrace Islam in this Ummah. Therefore, we talked about her earlier. And right next to her, <coughs> the one that we have to talk about, and we find no choice once we look at the hadith but to stand with her, that is Umm al Mu'mineen, Aisha, As Siddiqah, radiallahu anha. The life of Aisha radiallahu anha is such that if a Muslim woman will just study her life and look at her knowledge, her taqwa, her piety, her lifestyle, it's enough for her to know how to live as a mu'minah. If they won't learn anything more about anyone else, Aisha radiallahu anha is a perfect and a good and enough example for every Muslim woman. It's a type of life that truly speaking after looking at the history and the hadith and then the ayahs of Al-Quran al, al that talk about her. <coughs> that we can never cover the life of Aisha radiallahu anha in these sessions. I will just bring some headlines about her life that might give us some encouragement to study more of, the, of, the, of, of her life and especially for our sisters to learn more about Umm al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anha and then try to choose that lifestyle for themselves. Follow the steps of this great Muslim woman who of course in this Ummah most of the scholars say is the greatest or the second to Khadija radiallahu anha if Khadija radiallahu anha would be considered the greatest Muslim woman of the Ummah. And some scholars dispute between the three of them, Khadija, Fatima, and Aisha radiallahu anhum ajma'een. <coughs> and of course, it's difficult for us to decide when we look at the virtue of all of these. All three of them, we can never decide. Aisha radiallahu anha had some special features and qualities that normally you cannot find in any other woman. And most of those you can say are blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on her that she was just chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be at that position. And for us to know, and I would just have to say one thing about her that will just speak for everything. And then we'll try to cover as much as we can, or I should say as little as we can in this small, in this short time. And this statement should remain in our mind so that we will know that all what we can hear about her of regarding her virtue is expected. And she is greater than that. And at least that should make us try to learn about her and teach our daughters who that Aisha as Siddiqah radiallahu anha was. And the thing to know about her that will at least give us some idea of the person that we are about to talk about. A girl that was raised in the house of the Siddiq of the Ummah. She is raised in the house of a Siddiq and from the house of a Siddiq she goes into the house of the greatest Prophet of Allah. No one can be better Siddiq than him and no one can be a greater Prophet than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these are the two homes where she spent her time. Raised by a Siddiq 
then lived in the house of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this by itself speaks for everything that she has. We can't go into the details of how she was raised and the eight years that she spent with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, will just touch bases on few important topics that will at least give us an idea of her life. Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. After she got married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her with an understanding <coughs> that she wanted to learn deen more and more and she tried to follow the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in each and everything that he would do. Whatever she saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing inside the house. The time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leaves, this is what she is doing there. And this is why some of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi explain that as they want to talk to Aisha radiallahu anha, ask her some questions, they were told that she is performing salah. One of the Sahaba says, I went to her. After Salat al-Fajr, after the sunrise, she was performing the Salah, Salat al-Duha. So I sat there for a short while, but I realized she is going to be doing long rakah. I had to do some grocery for my family, so I went to the market. I went to the store. I bought everything I wanted to buy, dropped it at my home. Came back to talk to Aisha radiallahu anha. She is still doing her salah. And this is how long of salat al-duha duha she used to perform. And she herself says, after seeing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing this salah, even if my father would die at that time, still I would perform this salah. I will not miss this prayer. This is how important the sunnahs and the actions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to her. This is what got her to that level. Of course, the most important thing for us is following Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his steps in our lives. And if this is how strong she is with following the steps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salat al-duha, which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not perform it regularly. And if she's so punctual in that, and this is how important it is for her, that even if my father would die at that time, I will not miss the salah, simply tells us how punctual she was on the rest of the sunnah that she, she saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing regularly. Because of this, she got very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And blessed with some virtues that the rest of the Ummah cannot even dream about. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Aisha, here is Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, yuqri'uki salam, he's saying, say my salam to Aisha. Aisha radiallahu anha says, after the battle of Ahzab, when we came to Medina Munawwara, a man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an imama on his hand, yellowish imama was, uh, was on his head and he's carrying his arms. I asked, Ya Rasulullah, who is this person? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam who came to talk to me in the form of a human being. So she saw Rasulullah sallallahu she saw Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam in her own house. Once, when Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, they requested Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, if you please announce to the Sahaba that don't discriminate. They normally send you the gifts when you are in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. 
So ask them to send the gift whenever you are in whichever home. Don't just wait until 